All right, so this corn was planted through grass that was this tall, which is about two and a half feet tall. And now that the grass is bowing down to the uh, to the chemical or the herbicide that I put down and it's dying off, I am probably going to have to come back in on that second run. Uh, I'm going to have to spray it again because this grass that's here is going to cause me an ass ache. I am fully prepared to go ahead and do it. I um, was going to do it yesterday, but ended up doing something else. And uh, But the corn looks awesome. The corn looks awesome. You cannot tell me this corn doesn't look awesome. It came up through it. It's got good color. There's no striping of the leaves. You can see that they're green to the, uh, to the tips. Uh, nitrogen deficiencies would turn the yellow. tips the uh, phosphate potash deficiencies would be yellow striping up through the leaf it's not doing that phosphate deficiencies would turn this this corn purple there is no purple corn there is no purple corn there is no striping uh, of any concern uh, the only concern that I do have is just this grass that's coming up and I'm gonna take care of that in a little bit most of it is knee-high um, not the 4th of July yet. Uh, probably 90% of the corn that I've got planted will be knee-high by the 4th. And, you know, that's an old adage. This is 107-day corn, too, by the way. So I know there were some people that were asking what the, what the rate was. I will be putting on a side dress of urea at about 100 pounds to the acre just because this had no compost and it had no lime. All the other farm, part of the farm had it. This field did not. Uh, it shows in the uh, height of the corn that the other fields are a little bit taller. But uh, yeah, so I got a lot of things to do uh, to get this corn in a position of power, as I would say. Um, yeah, it's nice. It's nice. It's really nice. Secret sauce seems to be doing its thing as well. Um, I know what it does. Most people don't because I haven't told most people what it does. Uh, pretty happy with that. There's a compaction area here. This is a compaction area. This is where we came through to go out there to stack the hay. That's why this corn is a little bit compacted here. A little bit of deer damage, but it'll outgrow that maybe. Uh, maybe, maybe not, but it is. This is uh, 11 acres, 11 and a half acre field. This one is nice, beautiful, straight ass rows. Just talked to a guy that I farm his ground. He's like, When are you going to make this hay? And then he turned around and I didn't say anything. He turned around. I said to him, He says, When are you going to make this hay? I said, Well, I'm not. And he turned around. And he says, Well, wait a minute. That's corn. And that's exactly what I had said in one of my other videos that the locals don't know that that's corn. And one of these days, they're just going to turn around and look and be like when did that corn get there <laughs> you know? and that's pretty much and he lives on this road he drives by 150 acres of corn every day seven times a day and he didn't even know so i gave him a bit of an education all right let's talk about some corn and the issues we're having yeah just a couple of issues nothing terrible nothing i'm gonna lose a lot of sleep over just a little bit of sleep over so as you know, I planted through this grass, right? It was, or it was uh, orchard grass, reed canary grass, and fescue, Kentucky 31. To plant through this stuff, it took a lot of time because you gotta go slow. And you can see that it's kind of yellowing and it looks like it's lacking in a couple of different things. Like, well, I'll show you what it's lacking in. You see that yellowing leaf down there at the bottom. That's a potassium problem, lacking in potassium. Then, if you look at this, you see those stripes up the sides there? Those are the beginning stages of a nitrogen deficiency. Well, I know for a fact there's not a nitrogen deficiency here. And I also know that there's not really a potassium deficiency here. 
I have no problems with phosphate. Phosphate would turn these leaves purple, purple, purple. There's no purple leaves, nothing. Um, some areas of this field are worse than others. So you can probably see one of the issues that I have that's causing this problem, and that is my grass didn't die. Just didn't die. Uh, there's a reason for that. There could be two reasons for that, but there's one major reason for that. Cold, wet, cold, wet, cold, wet. Okay, so potassium deficiency. The potassium or the potash is there. It's there, but it can't be taken up by the roots because it's cold and it's wet. Too much water creates, uh, well, it gives the corn a hard time to pull up nutrients. Cold weather makes it hard for those nutrients, even, <laughs> even if they are there, to come up through the plant because if we don't have a hot sun burning on this corn, it's not evaporating any water out through its leaves. Therefore, it's not taking anything up. The thing that is taking it up and holding it is the grass, the grass that did not die. All right, so this area looks a lot better than some of the areas. And the third thing, the third thing is shading. So as you can see where this is kind of shaded even worse than it should be, it's, uh, well, it's got that, that burned off tip down there. It's not grown too, too good. Um, this is kind of what the first corn that I planted looked like. The only difference was that corn, heh, that corn, uh, I had compost on it. So when you put compost on, that has enough potash and phosphate, zinc, and all the other lovely little things that need to be in there. Um, and when I went back through with the Roundup and sprayed those weeds or that grass again and killed it, we had two days of hot weather. A total of, I think, four days in the whole month of June that made it to 80, uh, and two days that it got close to 90 degrees, 90 degrees. We should be having 80 degree weather all day, every day, with the exception of a shower day. That's really the main reason why this corn is not pulling the nutrients out of the soil. Um, and when I say wet, you know, I know there was a photo I posted on Instagram and they're like, oh, it looks like you need rain. I'm gonna show you how much I don't need rain. This is mud. This is mud in a dry part of the field. I'm making adobe bricks here. So when it's saturated that bad, all those nutrients that are tied up in there, those roots, they're just not getting it pulled out. We don't, just don't have the temperature. I am not at all surprised about this corn with the temperature that we've had. I mean, I was a little bit surprised with the, with the phosphate or the potash deficiency, that tip die off there. So I'm putting 140 pounds of well, I'm putting 50 units of potash on with the 25 units of urea nitrogen that I was going to put on. Anyway, that was going to happen regardless on the... Uh, all right, I'm going to call this an interesting field, <coughs> to say the least. Yeah, see, there's corn and the soybeans. Succotash, right? Succotash. Corn looks actually pretty good. Uh... These beans have taken off like crazy. Um, I planted, this was, you'll see the line in a second where I uh, ran out of herbicide where it washed whatever was in that tank. Callisto, atrazine, whatever the hell was in there. I uh, washed it out. But, uh, yeah. So the corn is there, and we're gonna see, yeah, the corn is there, we've got, we put nitrogen down on the corn, so, and I gotta pick that up. William was supposed to pick that up. You saw that in one of the other videos. The corn looks really good, but you're gonna get over here where I actually burnt these beans with that tank mix. And you'll see why I, the difference is right here. The difference is right here. So now you can actually see the corn down there. Uh, beans are coming out of it. They would never ever amount to much at all 
because of what happened. Uh, the corn's going to just take off and grow like hell. I, I know that for a fact. Uh, not going to be a problem at all. And I'm not even seeing the uh, I'm not even seeing any weeds or anything that are going to be a problem that I have to come back in and spray them. The uh, talked to the guys up at the fertilizer plant and they confirmed what I had suspected that when I put the lime down, the lime reanimated the uh, herbicide from last year. Whether because it's the acidic soil didn't allow the uh, the the herbicide to break down correctly. And when that happens, then it, it, it's there. And then, of course, you raise the pH, which when you raise the pH, that gives the, uh, the, that soil uh, or that, uh, what do you call it, that, that herbicide, that leftover herbicide, enough of a uh, stronghold there. It brings it back to life, and it burns your next crop, which just so happened to be soybeans. If I put beans after it or corn after it, I wouldn't have had that problem and it's even this is Callisto you can see it it's white um, that will come out of that now I'm not really I'm not worried about these soybeans being in here um, for a couple of reasons the soybeans are going to shade the soybeans are going to shade the ground which is going to cause you know the soil to stay moist and cool for the microbes and everything else that's going to be working in here. The corn is going to blast up past them soybeans. This is what you would call a companion crop. Let's pull that out of there. You can see these roots are severely burnt. They're, they're turning. They're not going straight down. But we do have nodules there. Uh, nitrogen affixing nodules. And they are working, obviously. But I'm kind of anxious to get when this corn gets up. I want to see those roots go for the nitrogen that those soybeans are producing and which they should oh, where William went my wife is over there crazy Asian um, this is volunteer corn okay, volunteer corn you see it's got a nice uh, nice root mass there but anyway yeah it's definitely gonna be a different different way of farming for me and uh, I'm probably going to come through and throw a little bit more nitrogen on uh, about if I use urea it's going to be 100 pound of urea that would be the cheapest route to go um, and I will just put 100 pound of urea which is 46 units of nitrogen and it's amazing when you get into this spot where they were not burnt back by that tank mix and I'm starting to get some flowers in there but there's nodules yeah I don't know I don't know like this this guy here is just yeah they're just the roots are they're just so if that's straight they're they're going in and going sideways that's damage that's damage but what can you do what the heck can you do right I know there's gonna be criticism and I'm probably gonna to have to spray this anyway and when I spray it I'm gonna to have to go up and down this way because my tires on the tractor that I have to use are uh, much much uh, too wide to fit down the rows 30 inch rows or 27 inch tires and it's not the back tires the back tires fit down the rows just fine kind of you got like an inch and a half on either side it's the front tire so in order to make the back tires fit the front tires are actually mashing down two rows on the inside so it's just less invasive to go the opposite direction now I put a foliar feed product on here on these beans I didn't do these beans because this has corn in it that had nitrogen but these beans I put a foliar feed on and uh, this was heavily deer trafficked if you look down there I've got a set of chimes out there that seems to deter them and we had a groundhog here which has got him all upset but these beans don't look so bad they look actually pretty good this is a replant situation as well uh, this is the worst farm I've got to be honest with you it is just the worst farm that I've got because it's just been a struggle it was the first beans that I put in the ground and it's just been an absolute struggle and what I figured it isn't that the beans were put in the ground too deep like I had previously thought it's that the uh, 
herbicide reanimated the herbicide from the lime and the compost and you can see there's an overlap right there right there there's an overlap and it's burned it so I don't know this is what it is yeah, there's gonna be beans here it's gonna be pretty good it's gonna be a pretty good crop and I don't know if I'm even gonna post this in its entirety but it is here